Hello, today we're going to look at the details of chemical reactions to see what happens when two elements actually react together and how the atoms behave during that chemical reaction. This is the science break and this is a video for key stage 3 chemistry on atoms, elements and compounds. The first thing is that if we want to see a list of all the elements that exist or that have been discovered, we would look on the periodic table of elements. This is the periodic table or a version of it. I'm sure you've seen something like this before. Uh, the key thing to remember is that all the elements are present on this periodic table. And for now, all we're going to really talk about is the idea that if it's not on this periodic table, it's not an element. So this contains all the elements that we work with in chemistry. Now let's take an example of just a few of the elements from that periodic table. Here I've got some sodium, some chlorine, some copper, and some helium, and these are all elements from the periodic table. And sodium is a solid metal, chlorine is a gas that's a non-metal, copper is a metal, and helium is a gas that's a non-metal as well, all on the periodic table. With sodium, if we were to look at uh, magnify and look at what's actually inside there. If we could do that, we would see that it's made up of atoms that are in neat rows and columns, as we've spoken about before. With chlorine, we could do the same thing again and see that the atoms are actually in pairs. Chlorine atoms are actually uh, grouped in pairs. And then we've got copper, which again is a solid, similar to sodium in that the atoms are in rows and columns. And again, helium, another gas, this time the atoms are by themselves and they are arranged as they would be in a gas. Now let's just make that look a bit more clear by taking off the magnifiers there so we can see it more clearly. So you can see on the left there we've got sodium metal made of sodium atoms. Chlorine gas is made of chlorine atoms and you can see they're found in pairs. That's how they're found in chlorine gas. Then we have copper which we have made of copper atoms and helium gas which is made of helium atoms. So the key point to remember here is that all of the elements are made of only one type of atom. Only one type of atom. So elements are made of only one type of atom. I've used a color code here just to show colors, um, but atoms are actually not different colors. Let's take a look to see what happens if two elements react together. So here, we've got the example of sodium metal reacting with chlorine gas. So there's some chlorine gas. Now the first thing is that we've got sodium on the left, chlorine on the right. But if we look at the features of each of these, sodium metal is a very reactive metal and it produces hydrogen when it touches water. Um, as we said, it's very reactive. And in fact, if you held it in your hand, it could burn your skin. And even worse, if you maybe swallowed it or something like that. Chlorine gas is a poisonous gas. It can cause all sorts of problems, including uh, irrit it's an irritant, so it can cause irritation in, for example, your eyes. And also, uh, if you breathe it in large amounts, it could damage your lungs. So these are the features of these two elements, or some of the features of these two elements. What happens if we react them together? Well, we can do that. Let's take our sodium metal. We put it in a small spoon-like container like so. We can get a gas jar or a glass jar of our chlorine gas. So there's our sodium metal. There's our chlorine inside that jar. So chlorine gas there inside a glass jar. We can cause a chemical reaction to happen between sodium and chlorine. So what we would do is we would heat the sodium. All of this would be done inside a fume cupboard. Heat the sodium, place it in the chlorine gas with a lid and you'd see a chemical reaction happening. Very bright orangey yellow colors as they react, and as the reaction finishes, we will be left with a new substance, which is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Now that new substance is actually common salt, the kind of salt you put on your food. So the features of that, salt, that solid that's produced, or the properties are very different to the sodium metal and the chlorine gas that we used to react together to make it. And that's an important thing to remember about making compounds in chemical reactions. Let's see what happens. We've got atoms of our sodium. We've got atoms of our chlorine here, which are found in pairs. And when the reaction happens, 
when these two react together, what happens is that the atoms are pulled apart from each other in the sodium and in the chlorine, and they recombine. So there they are being pulled apart during that chemical reaction, and they recombine in a different way. There they are, recombined in a slightly different way as the reaction happens. So let's summarize this in a diagram. Here's our sodium metal, the atoms in sodium. Here are the atoms in chlorine found in pairs as we've just seen. So we could add those together to show a chemical reaction. The plus means a chemical reaction is happening. And they recombine as part of this chemical reaction and they arrange themselves as shown on the diagram on the right hand side. We can write this as a word equation. Sodium plus chlorine gives sodium chloride. And remember, sodium chloride is common salt or table salt, very different to the sodium and the chlorine that's used to react it. This is just one example of a chemical reaction. There's lots and lots more that you will study over your time learning about chemistry, but let's just look at a couple of examples. We've got magnesium reacting with oxygen to make magnesium oxide. Magnesium is a metal. Mag uh, magnesium oxide is like a white powder. So that's very different to the metal when it reacts with oxygen. Hydrogen is a gas. Oxygen is a gas. You react those two together and you get water, which is very different to the two gases that react to make it. And one more example, we've got sodium plus water makes sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, just to show that it's not always just one product that's formed. Sometimes there's two. But again, the substances produced are different to the two chemicals that react to make it. So there's a few examples there of chemical reactions between different substances. Let's just make a note of the key points that we've covered in this video. Number one, elements are made of one type of atom only. One type of atom only. Two examples we looked at were that of sodium, a solid metal. There's our sodium as an example. And another example was chlorine gas made of pairs of atoms. There's our chlorine. The second thing we looked at was the idea that elements can sometimes react to form compounds. We need a definition of compounds. A compound is two or more elements joined together by a chemical reaction, joined together by chemical bonds. So here we've got our sodium and our chlorine gas. These two can react together. So there's our sodium, there's our chlorine. These two can react together and the atoms pull apart and rearrange themselves in a different way to make a brand new substance. In this case, it's sodium chloride, sodium chloride. The characteristics of sodium are different to sodium chloride. So sodium is a reactive metal. Chlorine is a poisonous gas, but when they react together, they make sodium chloride, which is common salt. Common salt is used as a food flavoring or a food flavoring enhancer. Part three, final part, not final part, one more part after this. The properties of a compound are different to the properties of the elements in it, so in the compound. So the properties of the compound are different to the properties of the elements that make it up. And then going on to our final point, we can write word equations to show reactions that happen. We could do formula equations as well, but we're going to look at just word equations today. So we've got sodium plus chlorine shown above makes sodium chloride. And that's how we would write the word equation. So that's it for today's video some very important key ideas that are going to be useful not only just for key stage 3 chemistry but also for when you do GCSEs as well. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.